Bye. 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 Welcome back to my channel. Ugh. I hate when I sound fake. I sound so fake. What can I say that like won't make me feel seem like I'm it's just fake? I think what's up? Did I be saying what's up? I think I'll be saying what's up. Yeah. Next time I need to see when somebody call me, I'm gonna see what I say. But welcome back to my channel. Um if you're new here, just subscribe, comment. I want everybody engaged. You know, I need some feedback and the all that do i need to put on a bra I... what's up y'all welcome back to my channel it's paris back here and if you're new please subscribe like comment if you don't like the shit you don't gotta like it but i'm just saying i mean why wouldn't you like it like unless you're a fucking hater i'm proud to announce that i have a new series coming to my channel and it's going to be basically me telling true crime documentary stories um it's like one of my favorite things to do one of my favorite pastimes basically <laughs> is to watch crime documentaries i begin too excited when i start talking for my channel yeah so here i am I'm about to start this today i'm so excited um you know i always have a disclaimer about how the fuck i'm looking i look crusty you gonna get you gonna get it how we living you you gonna get it like this is here now I ain't with all that fake shit. I ain't about to stop and go put on makeup. Sometimes I will, but not today. All of my true crime documentary series videos, I'm always gonna be drinking my favorite, which is Tito's vodka, or it'd be some type of a vodka. Like, I like all vodka, but sometimes I will have a different mix. So this mix today is um, cranberry and grape juice. So cran grape, you know, like they have the cran apple, the cran grape, whatever. So this one is cran grape. It's really good too. Mm. This gonna sneak up on me. So yeah, so my thing will be kind of like a turn up type of, but I'm still telling you the story because I'm just that good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, first person that I decided to do um, is Jeffrey Dahmer. I feel like the reason why is because he's like one of the top known serial killers. Let's get into it. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer was born May 21st, 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So. He's a fucking tourist. Wow, he's crazy. He's crazy like me. Whatever. I'm just gonna say Jeff, because I don't feel like saying Jeff Ray. That's just too much. Okay, so basically, um, Jeff was born May 21st. He's a tourist, 1960, and he was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, from zero to four, he was happy. Everybody claimed that he was a normal child up until the like birth of his younger brother. I guess he had only child syndrome at first and once the brother was born, it was kind of like, what? What the fuck? That's when he kind of switched. That's when he kind of had problems. That's probably when he needed to start it to get his ass beat. They said by his early teens, that's when things started to mm, take a little shift. Um, that's when he started to get into violence, murder. He didn't have many friends. He started to really, really get into the murder stuff or the murder business when he was 14. That's early. I think when I was 14, I had just begun playing with Barbie dolls because all the other ages, I was playing with Hot Wheels. Like, I was just, I might be a damn serious killer my damn self. Dahmer actually attended Ohio University where he only did one semester and then he dropped out. I mean, that's kind of normal. Lots of people do one semester or two and then they drop out. But yeah, it's just after he dropped out, that's when the alcohol became very serious. Like, it became serious. After he dropped out of Ohio State University, his father recently remarried. Um, actually, another thing was about his childhood, he started getting in a lot of trouble when his parents were getting like their divorce, which is normal too. Lots of kids act out when their parents are getting divorced. Cause I, I probably would have been raising hell. Yeah, so his dad kind of convinced him like, oh, you dropped out of school, you should just go to the army. So he went to the army. Of course, while in the army, I don't know what he did, but he was later sent home because that nigga was acting right. So they sent his ass home. They said, nigga, get the book. So when he got back home, his dad basically sent him to live with his grandmother. And while staying with his grandmother, the alcohol shit didn't get any better. In fact, the shit got worse. He even got arrested. 
later that year. Um, I'm not sure what he got arrested for, but I know he got out. Then he got arrested again, right? Because two boys said that this nigga was fucking beaten all in front of them. Fucking nasty. Even after that, he just received probation. So he got off kind of, I guess. I don't really know. So I'm gonna get into his murders because within my series, I'm not gonna go super deep, super wide because that's not what my channel is about. All right, so his first murder occurred like right after high school. He had just graduated. Um, I think it was in the summertime. Um, it, yeah, it was the summer because it was June 7, 1978. And if you see me looking now, I'm cheating. He picked up a hitchhiker. Um, the hitchhiker's name was Stephen Hicks. So he picked up Steven, put him in a whip, and took him to his parents' house. There, Dahmer proceeded to get the young man drunk. The nigga said, bitch, I'm a thot, give me lit. <laughs> when Hicks tried to leave, like after all the fun, Dahmer didn't let him. He actually fucking killed this man by striking him on the fucking head. The nigga said, boop. Then he strangled him with a barbell. So he dismembered the body parts and then he like packed them in like plastic bags and he kind of like hid them in like the backyard of his family's house, like buried them. Later, he got the remains, crushed them junks with a fucking sledgehammer. And he like, he took the bones and like scattered them across like a wooded area. Second victim happened in 1987. This nigga name was Steven too, which is weird. His name was Steven too. I don't know if he had a thing for Stevens, but his name was Steven, and this story is one that I kind of remember because I was like, damn, what the fuck? Him and Steven got a hotel, and they got drunk and stuff. And the next thing you know, Dahmer's waking up, and he look around, and he see this nigga dead, and he like, what the fuck happened? That's fucking scary. That's more than crazy. That's like... I started thinking like, damn, when I don't be remembering stuff when I get drunk, like, what if I? So he had bought like a large suitcase for him to transport the body, I guess he, I mean, he knew off the buck he was going like kill him. But I guess like when he woke up the next day not to remember how he did it was kind of like, what? Mind you, usually when he was like killing these people, he would take pictures of like the process of him killing them just so that he can relive that feeling. After two more killings of people in his grandmother's home, that's when she finally got tired of his drunk shit. She was like, nah, nah, I'm tired of this shit. And I think she kicked him out. So after he moved out, he had another incident where he came across like a 13 year old boy. He was charged with um, sexual assault. He pleaded guilty because he claimed that the boy seemed much older, you fucking creep. You knew damn well that boy was not old. But anyway, he got off the hook. He was lucky that time. March 1989 was his next murder after, you know, the little issue with the 13 year old boy. In March 1989 was his next victim after the 13 year old. He lured this person in the basement, drugged them, uh, sodomized or whatever it's called, you know, dick in the booty, photographed, dismembered and disposed of Anthony. So basically in May 1989, um, he had his trial for the child molestation case. And he basically got, he basically said that, you know, he learned his lesson based off, you know, the, the, the um, his previous arrest and blah, blah, blah. He seen the error of his ways. And then they argued that he needed treatment, not, to be locked up so basically like this nigga's sick he needs to be sent to a home the psychic ward not no fucking jail he gets to jail he probably just gonna be fucking niggas and be happy so let's put him in a psych ward where none of that shit can happen and go down so basically they bought that shit and he was doing this thing where he was going like to work in the daytime and then at night he would go to prison that don't make sense but it kind of makes sense to me because maybe he just stopped all these damn killings at night. But he only served 10 months and was granted early release. So over the last couple of years after that, the count went up. He had 17 murders. He developed rituals as he progressed, experimenting with chemicals and shit like that. And often 
consuming the flesh of the victim. So this nigga was a fucking cannibal. Also like drilled into victim skulls and shit. Like at this point, this nigga was a mad scientist and it was given like mad scientist. Why would you drill in somebody's skull? Hey guys, uh, I said I was gonna say that. What did I say I was gonna say again? I think it was like, hey, what's up? Well, what's up, y'all? Um, just wanted to say thank you for watching my first little part of my documentary series that I'm having on my channel. Um, it was just, it was really fun just to show like my personality and how much I love documentaries on YouTube and stuff like that. So I can't wait to see my progress through the months or whatever, maybe even years or whatever. And um, just give me any feedback. Um, I try not to have such a potty mouth, but also at the same time, I try to be myself. So, I mean, I didn't sign up for a PG-13 channel anyway. I don't know what to tell you, but just give me some feedback. Um, thank you again. Part two comes out next week. Holla at Jaguala.